Hello, everybody. My name is Frank, and uh, I would like to talk about color acceptance of base paints today. Poor colorant acceptance. Um, the reason for this is incompatibility between pigment concentrates and the white base paint, which leads to weak flocculation of the pigment particles. This leads to high rub-out values, reduced color reproducibility, gloss reduction, and of course, poor colorant acceptance. You can overcome this poor colorant concept, uh, colorant acceptance, um, especially when you cannot change the formulation of the base paint or the colorant with compatibilizers. Compatibilizers are substances of yeah more low molecular weight that can be added to the base paint and they improve the colorant acceptance which you can see here so without compatibilizer you can see very high rub out value and then in the second case compatibilizer is added to the base paint usually mixed in well, and then when you then add the colorant, you get a much better colorant acceptance. The, um, the cho choice of the compatibilizer, of course, depends on the formulation. Um, at first, let me talk a little bit about waterborne base paints with waterborne colorants. In this case, the, yeah, the flocculation takes place because of a lack of additive. Uh, so in a white base paint, the titanium dioxide is, yeah, because of cost reasons, usually not stabilized well. Um, so only a little additive is there to stabilize the titanium dioxide particles. When you then add the colorant, uh, in this case, maybe an organic pigment, um, it contains a lot of additive. So we have on this side, we have the titanium dioxide with a high surface area that is free of additive. And here we have a lot of additive on the surface of the organic pigment. And then um, the additive goes away from uh, the surface of the organic pigment particle to the titanium dioxide, just to outbalance the lack of additive there. And then it could be that the organic pigment particles are not stabilized anymore and they flocculate. What the compatibilizer now is doing, it when you add it to the base paint, it covers the titanium dioxide particle better than before. So um, it already covers the surface area of the titanium dioxide that would uh, attract the additive um, from the organic pigment from the colorant to go there. And of course, after tinting, it will also be on the surface of the organic pigment, the colorant pigments, the color pigments. And then in the end, everything is well stabilized and you do not see a high rub out anymore. To improve this color and acceptance, we have um, in this case four different additives that we would recommend as a compatibilizer. You can see we have different chemistries here. The first one is a dynamic wetting agent. This is the Sulfinyl 2502, um, which gives very good stabilization to pigment particles, gives very good wetting, high color strengths, and also good foam control. The second one, um, a non-ionic wetting and dispersing additive, you can call it a co-dispersant. This is the Cetasperse 182 that can help also to stabilize the pigment particles much better. Then CarboVet GA211, this is what we call a, a grind aid. So this is a non-ionic grind aid. Um, it combines very good pigment wetting with 
pigment stabilization and it gives in addition also deoration of the middle base so we can use this also um, yeah in the in the middle base of uh, the white base if you like the last one Tego disperse 660c this is really a dispersant in this case or so wetting dispersing additive but in it can also be post added. So this is a high polymeric additive that can be post added to the to the paint um, and helps uh, to improve the color strength development and also the helps the color and acceptance. Much more critical, the color and acceptance of a universal colorant, a waterborne universal colorant in a solvent bond alkyl base paint. A universal colorants um, are colorants that in general are waterborne and they can be used to tint waterborne base paints. They are also solvent bond alkyl paints. And um, yeah, already from this uh, contradiction, you see that uh, this can cause a lot of issues. Uh, so the main issue here is then the compatibility really in the solvent-based alkyl, uh, because um, you put a lot of water. Uh, so universal colorants contain a lot of water. You put a lot of water into your solvent-based alkyl system. Usually alkyl systems, so alkyl formulations can take up a lot of water, um, but sometimes it is can be too much, especially um, with the new low VOC alkyls, and then this water can cause some trouble. So here you can see this is the usually the stabilization of a pigment particle in a waterborne colorant. Yeah, so this is an etoxidate chain, it stabilizes the pigment particle. And you then put this water-based colorant in a alkyl base paint. Then the water has to yeah, be emulsified somehow. Um, so it has to leave uh, the etoxylate chain. And then we see the etoxylate chain is now on the pigment particle and the alkyl chain of the this person stabilizes the pigment particle. So the water has to leave the pigment surface and has to be emulsified in the system. And this is the critical step. And sometimes this um, does not work well and uh, you need a compatibilizer. And for this, we developed um, the Tego Color 8, 7060 in this case, um, which helps to emulsify the water and improves then the colorant acceptance of this un water-based universal colorant in solvent bond alkyl paints. Um, here an example. So here we have the delta E, and here the color strengths. Um, you can see here this is the blank, so this is now without compatibilizer and you can see the delta E is almost seven so very high um, and the color strengths yeah of course very low. When we added uh, one percent of Tego color at 7060 you can see the delta E is now lower than one so very good color acceptance and the color strengths is much higher in this case. Here the same in comparison to some other compatibilizers in the market. And here you can see that already 1% of color 87060 is sufficient um, to come in this region of low delta E and high color strengths. 2% uh, of this competitor, competitor C uh, has to be used and this is uh, quite high dosage. So 1% color 87060 is already sufficient. What you can also see is that um, not much compatibilizer does help a lot. 
Uh, so when we increase the dosage of the color aid, it also um, increases the delta E again. Uh, so there is a really a dosage that has to uh, that you have to meet um, to get the best performance of the compatibilizers, and this is not always the highest dosage. On the other hand, of course, um, you have to keep an eye on the influence on the coating properties. And here, the color, Tego Color 87060 gives yeah, the same yellowing like before. So Alcott paints usually give a little bit yellowing. It is the same after addition of Color 87060. The viscosity will not change. The drying time, yeah, we have seen um some minutes longer but not hours or days uh, so in general the same drying time and also the same gloss level so you know so alcots usually have a very high gloss um when the color aid can emulsify the water the gloss would stay stay on the same level and uh, so tegu color aid 7060 in post edition can improve the color acceptance of a universal alkyd, a universal colorant in a solvent bond alkyd system. Good. That's already um, now the final slides. Uh, so if you have any questions, just give me a call or write me an email. Here are the contact details and uh, if you are somewhere else around the world we have experts in the regions like in China, Southeast Asia, Nitin is located in India and um, then we have George in North America uh, and me and my colleague Gulzai uh, we are located in Europe and take care for European, uh, Middle East, and African customers. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a good day.